Okay, so we're here on site where we're going to be replacing this line extender today. It's out on uh, Bantley Drive out here in Susanville. Uh, we've had an issue out here for a little while. Uh, all these modems on the street, which is still only like 10 or 15 modems, have been going on and offline constantly. And the signature in the drops in RF is very mechanical. So it's not sporadic at all, like a noise event or anything like that. So we're thinking we have like some sort of electrical issues, one of our active components causing a problem. Uh, that's what we're going to be replacing today, and I'm going to turn around and show you guys that right now. So this is it, and hopefully we can get a decent shot at it. It's up in a tree. Right. Throw that off. And yeah, as you can see, if you watched my shorts, I showed you... A video of what the newer stuff looks like. This is the older stuff. It's a C-Core line extender. It's got a tap off the top of it, which I didn't catch before. That's a 20 value tap. And the input's going to be 500 P3 hard line. And then the output as well going to be the same deal. So we're going to be replacing this guy today and hopefully it's going to fix our issue. First, we got to get this kind of cleaned out, and the way we're going to do that, we're going to kill all these devil spiders. Try not to light a fire with a torch. There you go. That is good, fun stuff there. Love it. No more spiders. All right, now we've got to remove this shrink wrap off of our fittings. Open it up, check for voltage, all that fun stuff. Get these subscriber dro drops off. And that's where your guys' internet's coming from, by the way, out of these cable taps. That drop's gonna go to your home. And uh, if you're curious as to how that all gets back to the head end and how your internet actually works, keep following my channel and uh, you'll learn, I promise. All right, so we got it cleaned up. We got our shrink wrap off. I pulled these off. I thought I was recording, but it stopped on me. So you guys miss kind of some of the fun stuff. Uh, there is heat shrink that goes around these fittings that uh, we cut off and we take off with a blowtorch. I'll make another video about how we do it and you guys will get to see me um, put it back on when we cut the new one in. Um, this is P3500 line, so it's typically used as a distribution line, which means it feeds taps. You normally will see this feed in line extenders occasionally, but we like to use trunk line traditionally. So that's our input. This up here is our output side. We got that one cut off too. Um, yeah, I've opened up my mod, check for voltage. I thought I was recording that too, and we missed it. Well, that's all right. I'll make sure I got a good angle here for you guys. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. gonna get the top fitting off now oh that's super tight wow because we're not reusing these fittings. I'm not too concerned about it. <sighs> Holy moly. You didn't mess around tightening that side up though. All right. Try not to bend that. That is it's coaxial line, but it's super stiff. And these mounts gotta come off. If I could figure out what I did with my 716th nut driver. There she is. Those guys come off. Easy peasy. Like they're gonna have to 
take your paws dangly off. Alright, and there's our old line extender. Junk. Alright, so there's our old line extender there. The one we just pulled out. The old C-Core Flex stuff with a 20 tap off of it. That's our new stuff, our Aris line extender, a Regal 20 value tap, a housing to housing, and two 500 P3 fittings. It's hot today, so I've got my umbrella attached to my bucket. If you're wondering where my bucket is, it's up here above my head. Yes, I'm standing underneath it. And uh, yeah, here we go. We're going to build this sucker. So hang tight. Okay, let's get the building. Okay, gonna get shot there. And start by opening this can up. And yeah, you can fast forward through this. My editing skills suck. So you guys get to suffer until I can figure it out. This channel takes off, I promise to be better. three dollar tool right here will be the best purchase you ever make as a cable guy you should uh, choose to get into this profession if you do bad enough in high school kids I promise you you'll make a great cable guy okay that's our mod a high split mod so it just means with this new stuff our frequencies our return frequencies will go from 5 to 42 megahertz from 2 5 to 147 or 187 sorry sorry set screws our 500 p3 fittings there's two ways to cut these usually you have a long cut and a short cut instead of lineman lines line it up perfect that's your shortcut that's your long cut. These guys on the input, it's a long cut. I know there's actual specifications, but uh, yeah, we don't go by those. Okay, get a better look at this guy. So that gonna go into this here and that set screw is gonna seize it down so it's uh, nice and tight in there oh shit sorry I think that works Okay, so we know our input side, the 500P3. So that's what we're putting on here. 500P3 fitting. Now we tighten it down. Uh, to set these, typically you'd use a nut driver. Oh, I'm kind of half assing it today, so. And then, if you guys remember on the output, we had a tap here on the old one. So this is a housing to housing connector and then going into our tap. I don't have any millennium taps, so we're using a Regal, which these taps are just as good, if not better in my opinion. All right, so again, gonna be a long cut coming out. We might run into a little bit of an issue with uh, getting the alignment of the tap in the 500 wire or line. 
uh, that, that clearance might be a little bit of an issue for it. Figure that out when we get there. And then our set screws can go back in. I always tighten these up as I go. Just good practice so you don't miss any. The last thing you want to miss one of those and like that be the cause of your uh, your outage. You'll you'll be thinking you messed up for a good minute and then it turns out it was a uh, set screw the whole time. But don't do that. Check your screws. Okay, so I'll show you how we do this tap now. Okay, here we go with the tap. There's our Regal tap. You guys can see this good. Got input and output. They're pretty clearly labeled. These are those John Arden nut drivers I was just talking about a second ago. When they're not full of dielectric, they work pretty good. But I love these grips on these are amazing. Um, I lost half of them and uh, well I guess somebody borrowed them but I'm gonna get more I really like this and then these have screws on each side so one of those got to come off it can go like that or it can go like that either way or you can mix and match it either way so we want our input probably you know something like that but again we're gonna run into an alignment issue here I'm probably going to have to do a 90 off the side of this to change it up a bit. But yeah, we're definitely going to want it like that. And I do not have my nut driver to get these set screws out, so hopefully my screwdriver will suffice. That screw's coming out. Okay. Well, these guys are not really long cuts or short cuts. Actually, I think the Regal Taps are perfect long cuts. So we're going to do another long cut, mark it, cut it, double check it. There's lines on these taps. Put it at the end of the set screws. Looks like we're good there. And we're just going to screw our tap on to our housing to housing fitting. These are tricky because they like to come apart. <clears throat> Pretty tight. Tighten that back nut up. Pretty tight. I usually won't get them all the way tight until I've got it in the pad and all seated because you're almost always going to have to make an adjustment to it okay that part's on and i'm still recording that's good okay so again i tighten up these as i go what did i do with my dust caps i'm a smart man so i put them in the lid of my line extender Put my dust caps back on as I go. And then for this other side, like I was saying, we might run into a little bit of a problem here. I don't think the line's going to clear our can. It will not. So we're going to use a 90. Hang tight. Okay. So we've got our 90 here. Take that cap off. Do a long cut for the Regal Taps, easy peasy. Double check our line. We good, cool. And then that 90 is gonna come out this side, so we actually need this set screw gone this time, rather than the bottom one. See ya. Okay, we gotta loosen this, it's gonna be interesting. as interesting as I thought okay and then our 90 gonna go in here 
shunt. And then there are, or is rather, a mechanism to get this thing perfectly aligned the way you want it. We nailed it. All right. Tighten our set screw or seizure screw. It's not too tight. We just want it snug. Good. Oh, you know what? I'm so smart that I closed my dust cap into my uh, my can here. And it's on the ground. Don't want to forget your dust cap, especially if you're doing aerial work. With the underground stuff, it's not so bad because it's covered up. I mean, you will get crap in there. But if you're doing aerial work and you get home and you got a pocket full of these things, it's a pretty shitty feeling. Okay, got a little bit of dirt in there. That's okay. It's okay. We are fine. That guy comes off, and with these 90s, you do a shortcut. Okay. So, a shortcut on our 500 fitting just looks like this. Bank, shortcut. Easy, peasy. Make sure we're clear. She goes on, tighten her down, tighten that set screw down, dust cap back on, and now we've got it just about built. So. There you have it, new and old. So now we're gonna cut this guy in. If you guys will excuse me for a few minutes, we'll get that ready for you. Okay, so we're back. Um, those are our 500s, our input and our output, if you guys remember. This is the shrink tubing before it shrunk. This is uh, the 1300 size. All right, John. Um, I like to use this on 500 cable. It just shrinks a lot tighter. A lot of guys will just stick with like nothing but 1500. I like to keep all different sizes of it. So that being 11, 13, 15, and 17 of this can stuff. Um, here's our line extender that we just built. We're going to take the back sides off of these fittings. So these are three piece fittings. We're going to take the two back pieces off doesn't matter if we mix and match them throw that in the bushes that back nut goes on first and our other one and they line up pretty good so we're not gonna have to record this stuff it doesn't look burnt or bad or anything like that don't want to cross thread these because if you do you get to go find another one in the truck there's a couple tricks to avoiding that that's one of them. Input. Okay, slides on there. Maybe. Okay. Pretty good. That one went on easy. Now we're going to mount our new line extender in place it's got mounting brackets very similar to the ones that we just took off get those guys out of the way and then just line them up best we can and get them pretty snug not all the way we're gonna have to adjust all right nope 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 there you go. Okay. Hang tight. Right, here we go. 
We're going to start with our input. Slide it up a bit. Get that guy on there flush. Oh, we got our shrink on there. Don't forget your shrink. Uh, don't cross thread it. Don't do what I just did there. Just kind of bump it. Okay. That guy on there. If these want to be a little more careful than we were taking the other one off. Because this line extender is probably going to be here for the rest of my career. And probably the next guys. Until uh, they do build fiber to the home, which is kind of inevitable in today's age. Come on. Get on there. Be tight. Get our top on. Bend that shit too bad. Feet are in. Thread her on. Okay. Easy enough, guys. Pretty good. I'm gonna tighten that back up, and uh, now we're gonna open it back up and proceed to do our uh, our padding. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to explain too much about. Okay, guys. So we've got our line extender all cut in. I, uh, you didn't get to see me put these in. These are our forward EQs, or that's a cable simulator here. And then it's got a number value on it. That's our return EQ. I use a zero on most of mine. And then when I heat these up, I like to use higher value pads. Um, I've got 17s and 16s in all my ports right now, just because that's how I was taught to heat these things up. Um, we've got our fittings on and we've got our sh heat shrink in place and uh you'll get to see me do that but right now i'm gonna grab my meter and i'm gonna show you uh how we set levels on these things so hang tight all right so what i'm using is the avi 1x meter oh crap sorry just our home screen here That my reflection oh, it does sound nice. Okay, well well that's warming up. I don't know how many of you guys have these, but there's two main functions or features that I'll use when I'm setting these things up or really troubleshooting anything. So as a maintenance technician, and it's just channel check and a doxis check. The channel check's just gonna show me the entire downstream spectrum, my frequencies, their signal level strength, and the quality of that carrier. Whereas the DOCSIS check is going to emulate a cable modem and show me what my return path is looking like as well. So let's see what that looks like while we're setting this up. Okay. I know you're not going to be able to see me really well, but I'm going to kind of just walk you through what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I've got two jumpers on this. One for just tracking noise and then one for actually like setting these levels and stuff. The first thing I'm going to check is my input levels on my channel check. So I'm going to get my downstream frequencies lined up first. And uh, my phone keeps overheating today so I'm sorry this video is going to be a little gappy. Definitely missing stuff. running and basically here I'm just looking to make sure I do have downstream and I didn't mess up my fittings too bad when I cut it in and I do and I have a terrible reverse tilt just awful so we'll have to correct that with uh, 
the equalizers, the forward equalizer pads. The MER looks good on everything. Um, let me get you guys a closer look at this. All right, so there's where my jumper's plugging into. I'm probed into the input side on the line extender. And that's what I'm reading. So that's not ideal, but I don't have an MER problem, which is your modulation error rate, or a BER, which is your bit error rate. And as you can see, my low end of the spectrum looks a lot better. So I'm gonna move it over to the high end and see what we got. Okay, there we go. Why did I zoom in? Oops, thanks. All right, and as you can see there, I've got absolutely nothing. So, what are we missing here? I think we forgot our mid-stage pad. And so let's see if that mid-stage pad helped. Yeah, looks like it did. We still have a nasty reverse tilt, which we're going to have to address later. But for the most part, we've got our signal. Um, I just need the equalizers to correct it. So what I want to see coming out of that port, it's 20 decibels down, so we're adding 20 to it. I usually want to see about 35, so we're going to add a little more padding to it. All right, so sorry, I didn't mean to say add padding. It meant take it away. Why am I zoomed in again? Never mind. Okay. So that's what we're reading right now. Is my lens dirty? What the heck? Hold on. Okay, that's better. So currently, and I know the tilt, if you guys are in the cable game, that tilt doesn't look good. So if I'm, I'm at 8.9 and I want it about uh, 13, I'm gonna add 5 dB. So to do that, I'm going to take that 16 pad out and put an 11 pad in. Signal's going to drop. Pad it. Bam. And come back. So now we're coming out about that 35 that I wanted. Again, please forgive that tilt. I do not have my EQs with me right now. So we will be coming back for that one. So we're going to run the DOCSIS check. And to do that. I'm going to go DOCSIS check, click, nope. All right, here we go. And start. You guys don't want to watch all this. Basically, this is just going to range exactly like a cable modem does. So we are going to go hands off while that runs, and I'll be right back. So our DOCSIS check ran, everything passed, but we're transmitting at 51, so we're going to pad that down. We want to be about 37, so we're at 51 now. We need to go from a 17 to like an 8. Let's see what that does. Bing. And we're going to start it again. All right, so we got our level set. Everybody looks good now. Spectrum's nice and flat. Uh, a little bit of tilt, and we're ramping at 41 coming out of this, which isn't awful. So let's get her shrink wrapped and uh, buttoned up. All right, guys, my phone is overheating like crazy, so hopefully this keeps recording for us. We're gonna close our can. There is a sequence. These are numbered. Nobody goes by that. They're going to teach you when you first become a maintenance tech to abide by the numbers. None of your mentors are going to do that. Unless you get by the book Bryce. Which uh, will probably make you want to go work at McDonald's rather than be a cable guy. <sighs> yep, 
I'm the reason your cable's off, my friend. Okay, now the fun stuff. We get to shrink it. So we get our shrink tubing up into place here. And this is going to protect it from the elements. Beauty. Use our bottom, our input. Oh, see, make sure you guys can see that. There you go. Just gonna hook our subscriber drops back up to our cable tap. No, done on the far end. Think, think. I think all these guys were hooked up. Do you guys remember? Just the three. And yeah, basically, that, uh, that's our finished product. That's the new line extender cut in. Hopefully it fixes our problem. I'll let you guys know in the comments.